Yo, what's good, YouTube? Welcome back to Skylar Reacts. Today, we got the metric that's ruining hip hop. All right, I hope you guys enjoy. As always, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, join the fam, and yeah, let's get it. When it comes to speculation around what's ruining hip hop these days, there's several reasons that people can name. It's too ignorant. Rappers stopped rapping. The rise of short form content has even some of the most elite artists trying to make TikTok songs. But today, I'm going to introduce an argument that isn't commonly discussed. And it all has to do with first week sales. How many faking they streams? Getting they plays from machines? I can see behind the smoke of members, niggas ain't really big as they sing. Make no mistake, hip hop's obsession with things like their billboard successes and copies sold isn't anything new. In ways that other genres just don't allow for, rappers are allowed to boast about their triumphs over their fellow artists. In the past, the focus was on determining who could deliver the most impressive bars. But now that money has- Bro, back in the day, 50 Cent was him. I ain't gonna lie, 50 Cent was him back in the day. Oh such a big God. factor in hip hop, it set a new standard to measure success. Hip hop fans, and hip hop itself is competitive. Nobody really, really brags in the news as artists about chart position before hip hop. In a lot of ways, it's really unsurprising that today's artists have fallen into the trap. A lot of them grew up in an era where Kanye West and 50 Cent were actively squabbling over who could sell the most copies when their albums Graduation and Curtis were released Crazy on the same time. day. It was a battle that Ye would eventually win, and this decisive victory really spelled the end of 50's run at the top in terms of relevancy. Before that, the G-Unit leader was contributing to this culture of numbers by going on radio shows like Hot 97 and reading sound scan data to shade his enemies. It's only two niggas in the world that I've ever heard go to Hot 97 and tell them, now nah, we not running no commercials. Hold during the Rockefeller freestyle and fucking 50 Cent every Damn. time he went up there and started reading a fucking um. Uh, Reading fucking sound scanning. Then you had controversies <laughs> like the time that Little Wayne sold 964,000 copies Damn. of his album The Carter Four. Immediate. Now that is my goat. Lil Wayne, Wing, Wheezy, that's my goat. Really, the news that the 2011 out. record had sold just a little under the million that Wheezy turned in at his peak with the Carter Three during what was a very different time for the industry aroused suspicion. It got so bad that at one point, Birdman had to step in to defend the numbers and reassure everyone that it was legit. There are a lot of people saying that, oh man, we don't believe it. They bought and sold albums to themselves. Nah, man. What? That really don't make no sense. Why would we do that? You I losing mean, money. I'm pressing distribute them. <laughs> Ain't no need for me to buy them. That, that, that's like hustling backwards, right? That's yeah. Hustling backwards, man. You're Way losing in money. In the hip hop climate that today's stars came up in, everybody wanted to be on top, and people like DJ Who Kid, who was there to see it all, believes that has bled into the culture we see today. The 90s is when the younger generation started to pay attention to record sales, and that's when the overall scope of selling records and trying to sell as many records as possible changed for the entire record business. I think mm. people seeing other people's success becomes a contagious situation. It's I know the record labels is loving this. They're just rubbing their hands like Birdman, like, yeah, we about to get this money. Y'all in the competition to to see who sell, y'all marketing like that for us? All right, cool. Yeah, we love this. Fucked up how a number makes you not like a song anymore. Although it would have been bad in the 2000s, it's nothing compared to the social media age we're in today. Where every Friday, fans look to see how the latest releases charted and the first week Facts. sales they turned in. Most of the time, this leads people to dismiss the project as a failure, causing the album to be largely forgotten regardless of its content. And with a single number being enough to make you not care about a project, or ignore it completely, this is causing major problems for not just the conversations around hip hop, but the actual creativity we're seeing in the genre itself. Mm. So how did we get here? And are people finally realizing that we need to fix it before it strangles the culture? The first week sales culture didn't emerge from nowhere. Like everything, the- No one speaks about first week sales more than academics, bro. That man loved the first week sales. Anything when it comes to argument with a, with a rapper or any artist, the first thing he goes to was the uh, first week sales. <laughs> The media has had a huge role in bringing this to prominence. And one of the main people leading this charge towards fixating on first week sales is DJ Academics. Looking bro, back, he's been feeding- Exactly. Bro, I be watching Academics stream all the time. Bro, 
first week sale is like the number one thing he talks about. <laughs> Into this narrative since 2014 at least. Not only publishing first week sales every single week on his social media accounts, but constantly explaining why they apparently are so important for how we perceive artists. This is where these academics are now with the harsh realization. When you realize that your fucking album you just dropped actually flopped. Now we got two definitions of what a flop is. We got a fan flop and we got a record label flop. <laughs> now to fans, which is us, we see a flop as anything that's not competing with everybody else. For example, J. Cole or Drake or Kanye, they, they drop an album and it does about half a million first week or so, right? Or even in R&B, say like R&B singers drop an album, they do like 150, right? We think that any other artist, if you're not competing with that, yeah. nigga, you flop. Nigga, your shit just flop. You could be you could be a fresh artist, right? You could have 50K sales. People will say you're a flop. 50k sales is a flop? Like, what? <laughs> okay, then. But now, for, for a record label, it's different. Because um, for a record label, what they consider a flop, they'll think your shit is a dud, a waste of time, basically a drink coaster in a fucking jewel case if they didn't recoup, so it's kind of relative. At every opportunity, Academics has gassed up rappers and celebrated those who are doing major numbers. Mm -hmm. Just look at how he reacted to Lil Durk breaking the 100k mark. That nigga work. He just did 120. Yo, clap it up. Can we look at that real quick? Lil Durk, 7220 Damn. sells 120 first week. Big dog shit. That's one thing I like about academics too. He don't only talk about the bad, but he'll congratulate you when he do something good. He might be biased at times, just like everyone else, but give credit to where, where it's due. I'm sorry. Good shit. That's great sales. But what's missing from this is that there was no analysis of the project or why it was receiving these numbers. Mm. Ultimately, Academics rarely talks about the quality of the output and instead focuses solely on the sales and the criteria for who is a big name. And for every celebration of people like Drake, he also weaponizes those numbers when one of his enemies is perceived to have flopped, as was the case when he was feuding with the City Girls. Now talk to almost the head of the RIAA. If you don't know who that is, that's the organization that actually certifies albums. So if your favorite album by your favorite rapper is Diamond, they do it. Platinum, they do it. Gold, Damn. they do it. They told me this shit went 15 times plastic. This shit was ridiculous. No, plastic this is crazy. No, that's they disrespectful. Said, this is the first <laughs> triple plastic certification we given out. He said the last time they dropped oh, a record. I didn't realize I'm blocking Academics face. Bro, I'm the number one editor on YouTube, bro. I'm editing live it went double styrofoam a self-described numbers guy academics has even argued that views is a better album than kendrick lamar's to pimp a butterfly and that k-dot pales in comparison to drake as an artist based on nothing other than this data to pimp a butterfly first week sold 324,000. okay you might have to go to 16 where he drops views views obliterates that yeah but i always have felt that if Kendrick, J. Cole, and Drake all dropped on the same day. Most people would listen to Kendrick first. No way. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, no. he's I more mean, anticipated. Yo, Vlad. He has way more Grammys. Yo, Vlad. Yo, he's, more, he's more Yo. artistic. Yo, Vlad, 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 Vlad. He's not as much of a pop Vlad. artist. I get that. Vlad. You disagree Vlad. with me? Vlad. I mean, this really age. To be honest, this aged really well because Vlad is right. <laughs> Vlad is right. This aged pretty well, so. So, there's a couple problems with that. First, it goes against some of the basic principles of the genre. It used to be about the best lyricists coming out on top through skill and talent. But now, it seems like success is more about following trends or relying on famous collaborators rather than pushing boundaries and improving your craft. Besides that, as a majorly influential figure to younger fans, academics treating hip-hop this way means that other people are going to follow suit. Mm. Dude, just looking at the numbers of the first week, it can't necessarily assess quality. It could be saying like fast food is a gourmet cuisine just because more of it is consumed. In the hell fact, is that? some argue that it isn't the numbers in the short term that matter, but the legacy of the project. So this makes first week sales a false measurement of success. A prime example of this is Nirvana's iconic album, Nevermind, which only sold 6K units in its first week. But even but the thing is, it's just like you have to also look at the, econo the economy too. It's just like you can't like expect people to just go out and buy like albums and stuff anymore. Like times change, bro. Times change. If you're talking about streaming numbers and whatnot, yeah, but record sales, people are not going out there. I'm purchasing albums and whatnot, bro. 
the only people that's doing that is the hardcore fans. And yeah, like, no way going and doing Eventually all that extra stuff. Diamond status. Despite this, we are currently in a culture where if enough noise is made about poor sales, the album won't get a fair shake. JT from the City Girls once pointed out that the low first week sales of their album Raw and the negative reaction it garnered on social media made it seem like the album didn't stand a chance. Damn. If you don't go hard with promoting your shit and putting the people face, like, of course it's gonna miss people. And I feel like it missed a lot of people. And then by the time people discovered it, it was discovered as a joke. Like. A lot of people found out through our record sales because that was probably the most viral thing. And rather Damn. than the city girls accepting the fact that first week... Yeah, so when people already get the... um, If people already get the impression that it sucks, so by the time they listen to it, they in their mind, they already... If they're not listening to it with an open mind. They're already in the back of their head, okay, the song sucks, let me see what everyone's talking about. And they're going to nitpick whatever it is in that song, and then they're going to run with that. So it's, like, unfair. You feel me? So... Sales are pretty much pointless, their focus on the numbers has gotten worse. To the point that recently, she tweeted a full on guide on how to stream her album correctly. Because of the fear of getting mocked over their first week numbers, some people who base their entire identity on sales can be left looking goofy because of this pressure. Whether you're an up and comer in the game or a veteran, the pressure to sell doesn't discriminate. And when it hits, the effect can be devastating and lead to public meltdowns. After dropping lines like, to be the queen of rap, you gotta sell records, you gotta get plaques, on the track Make Love with Gucci Mane back in 2017, it wasn't surprising that Nicki Minaj had a meltdown when Travis Scott beat her on the charts. Whole nigga of the week, of course, is Travis Scott. Travis Scott. On One thing about Nicki Minaj, I respect her and whatnot. She's a queen, whatnot. Let other people get shine, bro. You don't need to be at the top 24-7. This is why I respect Wayne, bro. Wayne does be out of the people way. You want to feature, he'll hop on your shit, he'll carry your shit, and then he does go back to go back to skateboarding and whatnot. Nicki Minaj, she has to stay number one for every anything anything that comes to like female rap, she has to be number one. If she's not number one, she's crashing out. <laughs> Thursday, when he realized the Queen was about to have the number one album in America, he and his label decided to have Kylie and Baby Stormy put up a uh, tour pass. How are you selling something that does not have anything to do with your album, but it's being counted on Billboard as album sales? But what oh, we know. Oh yeah, it was that. I remember that now because they um, I think they, they, it's like some bundle thing that has to do with their baby, and then Nikki was crashing out, bro. Don't do is have this auto tool man coming up here selling fucking sweaters and telling y'all he sold half a million fucking albums because he didn't. Stupid fuck. Left so oh, angry that she wasn't mad. number one in first week sales that she honed in on Travis's, Nikki focused solely on Travis's success, overlooking the fact that she had offered her album with a special $5 bundle, uh, including a poster and a free trial to title. You can't throw stone in a glass house, bro. I'm telling you, listen, you did the same thing, Nikki. Calm down, bro. Calm. Game is game. Calm down. You know what I'm saying? The baby just put the edge over you that's that's just the way it is <laughs> on top of that she added the number one hit fifi with six nine to the project after its release all in an effort to boost her numbers this highlights the unhealthy obsession with sales above all else bro i know for a fact this supposed to be inside of a uh yeah like a vagina like this this because i've seen like pictures like close up before on don't ask me how but i've seen it and yeah it's yeah it sometimes turns artists into hypocrites <laughs> as they prioritize numbers over their artistic integrity for an example of this look no further than the change in mentality of french montana since the first week sales era really got underway back when he was first dropping records french used to be unmoved by it as he cared about the lasting impact in 2013 he was saying things like I really believe it's not what you sell, but where you end up at. Look at Akon. He sold 17,000 in his first week. He ended up selling 5 million copies. Look at Shaggy. He sold 10,000 and ended up at 10 million. Damn. I know it's going to last forever. I know once people hear it, people will be like, damn, this is really it. After all those big... And that's the way to think. You can't just do things and just focus on numbers. Because do you care about the craft or do you care about the numbers? You feel me? If you just focus on the numbers, you don't care about the culture. You don't care about anything else but your pocket and the numbers. I just being on top.
claimed back then, his lengthy time in the industry has meant that he's also one of the many who have fallen victim to it now. And as I explained in my detailed breakdown of his career, he started doing anything he could to boost those sales, even if it meant that he had to scam his fans. But even after all that went down, French would go on record complaining about how artists had been forced to comply with this culture. We all brainwashed and gonna have the biggest numbers. It's taking the love out of music. People are not mm -hmm. making the music that they love no more. People exactly. are chasing those numbers. And how you chase those numbers, you go to rap life, you go to rap caviar, you go to whatever it is. This is what the best songs sound like. I gotta make a song that sound just like that. That's why every time a number one hit, everybody try to make the beats just like that. Rather Same. than just being yep. an issue that rappers have to contend with, French then said it was affecting the quality of the music. Niggas ain't standing on nothing. Niggas ain't saying that. Niggas ain't standing on no style. Niggas ain't stand. You know what I'm saying? Like there's there there's nobody that's really just just pushing the envelope. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's brainwashed. Everybody, you know what I'm saying? They ain't like, standing on business. From the numbers to the swag to everything. It just is. You know what I mean? Obviously, coming from him after the Mac and Cheese Five situation, people thought this was really hypocritical. Bro calling himself out. Bro literally dropped eight versions of the same song for streaming purposes. <laughs> French never said he was immune to it all, but someone who's been in the game for so long, suffering from it so badly, shows the depth of this problem that's been created by the media, fans, and the rappers themselves. Considering people like French and Nicki are so entrapped by it, some people might think there's no hope. But there are signs that people are finally waking up to it. For example, after the release of his new album, Lil Yachty showed That's what a dropping the obsession shirt. with first week sales can get you. On his podcast, Yachty has made it clear that he's knowledgeable about the financial side of the game. I mean, Wayne did a million remember. on a leaked one point bootleg two. album. The, the Carter 3, I had that album months before it came out. By the yeah, time really? it came out, absolutely. Nigga, the nigga at the barbershop had it in the back of his Buick. <laughs> Over the years, Bro, the golden days. One, bro, if he didn't have a man, right, selling either bootleg CDs or bootleg movies out of his car, bro, like you're in the wrong location. Even back in the Virgin Islands, bro, we had guys standing in front of Kmart with a with a shopping cart full of CDs and whatnot, and the um bootlegs and shit, bro. The bootlegs are so bad that when you're watching, there's people walking across the screen and whatnot, like someone literally. With their little iPhone 2 or whatever, and just record the whole movie. Like, literally. The, the ATL days. rapper has struggled with trying to get the numbers he wanted to the point that it made him doubt the worth of projects like his debut, Teenage Emotions. When I first released my Teenage Emotions album, I thought that shit was fire. As you should. Then the sales came back and it did 44,000 in the first week. And I was devastated and so confused. I worked so hard. Since Damn. then, Yanni has gone back and forth when it comes to sales. Peaking with 64k for Lil Boat 2, which was widely regarded as a pretty poor record. Now, Yachty has found his identity as an artist, and in what should be a lesson to other artists, freeing himself from that mindset of focusing on first week numbers allowed him to make the most acclaimed album of the year. Let's start here. I did what I really mm. wanted to, which was create a body of work that reflected me. He said of dropping the psychedelic project. I was kind of nervous to put out music, but now I'm on some other shit. It was a lot of self-assessing and being very real about not being being happy with where I was musically, knowing I'm better than where I am. Because the shit I was making did not add up to the shit I listened to. I just <laughs> wanted more. I just want to be remembered. I want to be respected. Following its release, Yachty's Let's Start Here sold 37k in its first week. That's a little more than his last album, but almost half of Lil Boat 2. However, mm. these numbers don't really mean everything, because where Lil Boat 2 did better initially, Let's Start Here is a project that's now beloved by fans. In the week that it debuted, the album was outsold by Trippy Red's Mansion Music, a 25-track long album that hasn't exactly been hailed as a classic. And this, in a nutshell, is why first week sales aren't the crucially important metric to determine success. To be honest, as a YouTuber, well, part-time YouTuber, I still, like, I still struggle with that too. Like, the whole views and numbers and whatnot. Like, it's still, it's just something that you have to, like, remind yourself to not care about. You feel me? As so many people like to pretend they are. Because if the record is disposable, then those numbers aren't going to last compared to a great body of work. And these days, more and more people are waking up to that. On Trippy's record, he basically delivered 25 tracks which didn't stray too far from what he had done before. If you're trying to maximize first week sales, that's a good plan because you'll be appealing to what's popular at the time. But even that is starting to lead to a decline and actually affecting those numbers that everyone is so hyped for. It's even leading hip hop to lose ground to other genres and it's got people like Offset thinking we're focusing on the wrong things. I'm, I'm, I'm noticing that like the numbers are down 
in our genre specifically because I feel like everything is so the same. Like, yep. the next new is another nigga that was just here. Like, it's nothing new being brought to the game, not just on the sound side, but just all the way around as, like, creatively, too. Like, the most videos be, be like, a Rolls Royce in the background, two chains on, and... And that shit getting boring, fellas. It's like no thank you, thank you. It's the same th rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. The same thing over. That's how I'm like. That's how I'm like. Re that's why I like reacting to like different type of like genre music because it's just the same thing over and over, bro. No real entertainment. Why you got these pop and these country artists smoking shit because they coming with the full round, like the full package. You know what and I'm saying? It ain't the same. Like they telling and stories and yeah, real songs. everything ain't flexing. In the view of Offset, it's more projects like Yachty's that we need, and less mm. that are just rehashes of what has already been done. And with the numbers down, what do these rappers really have to lose? Well, unfortunately, until we change the conversation around first week numbers, there's a lot. Because if they spent some of that energy trying to work out how to increase their first week sales into actually growing their connection to their audience, then they can succeed without ever having- You have to be, you have to be personal. You have to open up to your audience. You have to make them feel like, if I was an artist, bro, I would be screaming. I would be doing whatever it take. I, bro, I'll be on- on live, I'll be talking, communicating, bro. You have to worry, be, about you know? That. And it accessible. seems that the real way to get the bag comes from having a dedicated fan base who are always ready to show out for you. And no one has put this better than Mr. Joey Badass. After taking five years out of the game, Joey returned in 2022 with the album 2000. But rather than sweating the numbers he did, he focused on what really counted. I feel really compelled to say, fuck first week sales. They simply do not matter anymore. I mean, when's the last time anyone you know bought an album? Thank can you. All anything we want but in order for it to count as an album sale you need to listen to every song like a thousand plus times they're trying to make it seem like everybody flopping when in reality they changed the rules mm -hmm. so someone please tell me why the fuck anybody is still worried about that they're trying to take the power from the musician because they never learned how to measure influence properly at this point just shut the fuck up and enjoy the music unsurprisingly Respectfully. saying that got him some blowback from those obsessed with numbers but joey had the answer to that by showing that he had something a lot of major stars who do better first week sales than him don't and that's the ability to sell tickets and make some real money in the streaming era everyone has ignored making something engaging in favor of making what really sells as a result the focus on first week sales has stifled rappers from taking chances because they want to be seen as doing mainstream numbers now with hip-hop sales on the decline and audiences getting restless it's time for people to take more chances rather than wondering about what figure dj academics is going to post after your album has been out for a single week because if you make something really great then whether it's through people flocking to your shows or organically making a big splash on the charts the talented rappers will get what they deserve facts i hope you guys enjoy it this that's it for this reaction please like comment subscribe join the fam and i'll see you for the next one